Jungwo, the Middle Kingdom. We are the center of commerce and culture in the middle of barbarians. For thousands of years, the fertile Yangtze and Yellow River valleys have fed, clothed, and nurtured us. Foreign caravans travel great distances to buy the beautiful things our ancestors taught us how to make, such as silk and carved jade. Do these jealous barbarians send spies to see inside our city walls? They envy our thriving markets. The elegance of our arts, the grandeur of our palaces. They are amazed by our many inventions and the knowledge of our scholars. Therefore, in this, the year of the tiger, the emperor has commanded we rebuild the great wall of 10,000 li that shields our empire. For just as the dragon protects the Pearl of Wisdom, so must our Emperor guard against the barbarians who threaten the rise of the Middle Kingdom. Hi guys, welcome to the next Let's Play. We are doing Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom. Uh, a lot of you have been requesting this over the years, and it's a game that I've had a lot of difficulty trying to get a hold of, uh, because it's not very easy to get a hold of. I mean, it's not on GOG, for example, GOG.com. Uh, so I had to try and find a disc copy, which I found fairly recently on eBay, which has been working out very well. And as you'll notice, uh, the resolution is quite big. I'm using a 1080p hack, as obviously. And it plays out really well. And this campaign will be on hard difficulty from the beginning. Uh, this campaign here, this Emperor is me already. I've been doing uh, quite a lot of the missions. I'm up to about um, Handan or whatever near the end of the third campaign. Uh, so let's create a new Emperor, like so. Um, now there are a lot of changes to the game, and um, one of them is that you can choose a zodiac animal. Uh, I'm not really into that kind of stuff, and in general, the only thing it does is not really very much. Uh, I think it just gives you like the ability to get a bonus or something on your year of the zodiac. But other than that, it's redundant in my opinion. Of course, some of you might disagree. Um, there are a lot of changes, as I said, to the the game mechanics. Um, but I'll go over them over the course of the tutorial missions because uh, they give you a lot of helpful information. I'll try to discuss some of the changes that are happening. And um, so let's go with where is it? Dragon. That's the one I went with in my ever playthrough. So let's start. Uh, you can play custom campaigns in Emperor, which is actually really useful, as well as open play some of the maps, uh, which is actually quite useful. Uh, so let's go to the historical campaign. Now, unlike um, Pharaoh and Caesar III and all that, um, where you had to unlock the, the campaigns, um, in Emperor you can start even in the very last one. I'm not actually sure why they did that, because someone might accidentally start the Song Jin dynasties by mistake and then have no clue how to play the game. So in my opinion, you should really have them locked and unlock over time. So we can start with the Xia Dynasty. Now, because it's a Chinese-based game, it's following ancient China, please excuse if I say things wrongly, uh, because of course I'm not a native Chinese speaker. So Xia Dynasty, uh, begin your journey into ancient China here with these simple tutorial missions. It is here, in the time of the prehistoric Xia Dynasty, that our people first learned to work the land for sustenance and shelter. To prevent stumbles later, travel now down the path of the Xia. 
listen closely and learn all that our venerated ancestors have to teach us. As you can see, there are seven um, dynasties. Uh, there's a bonus dynasty, I can't remember what it's called, it's Jin Woody or something, I can't remember, but we're not going to do that in this particular Let's Play. Now, there are a lot of missions, and they can go on for quite a long period, and as I've said, they're going to be done on hard difficulty from the very beginning. Uh, very hard is just too hard and normal, it's just ridiculously too easy. Uh, so let's get into the Shah Dynasty, I'll let you listen to the little opening sequence, I'll talk about one other thing there as well. Welcome to ancient China, home to the world's oldest continuous civilization. You are about to travel back in time over 4,000 years. For it was then, along the fertile banks of the Wei River, that several families banded together, discarded their nomads' cloaks, and established a small settlement. As village elder, it is your duty to plan the layout of this new settlement. You will be called upon to provide your people with food and water, as well as a means to slake their spiritual thirst. So we're the first missions, Shelter and Sustenance. They do have city names, but they don't tend to refer to them a lot in the thing at the bottom. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but the goals are a lot more varied. And some missions you might not even have to worry about population size at all to complete the mission. And as you can see, it's on hard difficulty. I think that's just the right amount of balance not too difficult and not too easy, so let's head on into this first mission. Uh, you get a lot of tutorial help at the start, so let's have a read. I'll read through a lot of this just to give you an idea. So the first thing you'll need to do is designate where your villagers' houses will be. There's already a road loop which makes an ideal spot to build near, as you can see here. In the tutorial missions, they kind of lead you into certain places to build, so don't worry about it, your cities will look almost exactly identical in the tutorial missions, unless you just build outside the loop instead of in it, you know what I mean. Uh, so press the population button and then select common housing. Place about 10 to 12 common housing plots around the inside and outside of the top part of the road loop. Um, you don't have to do exactly everything in the way the tutorial state. Um, if you want to, you can, but it's kind of boring in my opinion, so don't do that. And I'm certainly not going to follow the tutorial to the exact letter. Um, the one thing that Emperor does if you remember in Pharaoh, you just played down, placed down housing and you just evolved up to a certain point and it just kept evolving. Uh, in Emperor, elite housing, the manors and all that, are separated to completely separate housing structures and they're designed slightly differently uh, to common housing. So there's a complete divide between your worker housing and your elite housing. They're not, you don't just build one type of house and they evolve to the elite housing level. So it's quite useful. It is very important that each building you place touches is placed next to a section of road. Without access to a road, a building won't develop. If a house... No one... Oh, that's typoed, I think. There are quite a lot of typos in the text. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure why, but... If a house, no one will arrive to move in. Um, yeah, oh, alright, I understand the sentence now. So if it's a house that's not accessed to a road, uh, there won't be anyone to move in, and if it's a workplace, workers will not arrive and goods cannot be delivered. In a moment, you should close this dialogue by right-clicking on it, then then left-clicking the OK button on the Messages dialogue. After you've placed some houses observed your villagers arriving, you can reopen this dialogue, blah 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 blah. A wise sage once said, if one person builds a well, 1,000 families will have water to drink. And so it is that, that the first item your villagers need is a supply of drinking water. Press the safety, blah blah blah, I'll go through that in a second. Pausing, fire prevention, aha. Uh -huh. um, there is one major aspect of Emperor that I really like, which is a nice little quirk, and I haven't mentioned it yet. Um, yes, Feng Shui. Um, this is like a major desirability thing and actually feng shui being high is important because if it's too low your city will suffer and um, so you have to keep it high. For this let's play I'm not going to try and get perfect harmony which is the highest level which means everywhere is placed where it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to try and at least get the second best option in all the missions which is harmonious balance which is I think good enough because sometimes I have to build cities where you can't get perfect feng shui and it's just the way they are. So in China feng shui plays an important part in determining the proper location for structures, houses, shrines, industries, even graves. 
A building displaying a green footprint when being placed it's over a harmonious site. Because of the way that China's stuff works, you have like the five elements like the wind, water and all that kind of stuff. I don't actually know them all offhand. Um, if you place a building near an area which has got good feng shui, that means it's in harmony with whatever it's meant to be next to. If it's orange, that means that where you're placing it, it means it's not in harmony. And it basically means that things like firehouses and all that have to be built near rocks um, to have good feng shui. And there are actually ways to have bad feng shui even though you're near to something that's supposed to be good. Because other things can actually affect the feng shui. Like, so if there's trees near rocks, then fire... Um, Inspector's towers don't work the way they're supposed to. Uh, so a building display a yellow footprint is over an inauspicious location. Try to place most structures in most harmonious in, in harmonious locations. Sorry. However, don't be only concerned if you can't find harmonious sites for everything you build. The inhabitants of a town with very good feng shui will regard you. Their leader with greater esteem. So consult the online helper game manual. Oh no, that's kind of annoying. Undo, clear, road, network, road block. Yeah, you get road block right from the beginning, which is actually really helpful. Um, hunting season opens. The food stuff is a lot different. Uh, it grows in seasons and you can get loads of food stuffs in the game. Uh, market square is how they deliver things. Instead of a bazaar you have a market square and you place buildings onto it to give the different things it needs. Uh huh, go through. A peddler goes around and gives some stuff. Um, yeah, the goal is to have 150 people in plain cottages, which is not too difficult to provide because there's only one food stuff. Um, religion is important. Um, the religious aspect is not the same as it is in Pharaoh. In Pharaoh, where you would build temples and shrines to keep them happy to get the blessings, basically you don't have like good and bad stuff. I mean, you do have them, but it's not in the way that if you please one god, you'll get a boost to your trading quarters. Um, Basically, you keep them appeased and they'll come to your city and give you a benefit around the city, like your houses might improve when they might not have originally, or you can fight better armies and all that. So let's proceed. Um, just to give you an overview of the speed settings, I've got it to 80 and 70. I'll speed it up and slow it down. So I can't really say much because there's not much to talk about, so let's just get started. Um, so let's just place down some housing. I'm going to place it in this inner section. Um, like so. Um, so as I was saying, feng shui is really important um, because um, bad feng shui affects the city. So as you can see that's gone orange and there it's gone green. And you can see your feng shui thing on the aesthetics tab but you can't see it right now. So getting perfect feng shui is not really so important in this particular map. Actually no, let's just delete that roadblock move it down a bit. And put down a common market square like so with a food shop. Delete all that and then put the wells in. And so there are a lot of changes to the way that the game plays out compared to what it was in the previous games. Um, some apps give you access to all four food stuffs from the start, which is really good in my opinion. Uh, but you've got to control them because there's a, a thing called food quality. Basically, unlike in Pharaoh and that, where you just provide them additional foodstuffs and they evolve, basically, the types of food you have in a mill um, affects the kind of food that they get. Uh, in Pharaoh, for example, you could separate the granaries into different foodstuffs and they would go and get it regardless, as long as it was in the right food order. Um, in Emperor, you can't do that because if you have all the game meat in one, like say you have four foodstuffs and you put them all into individual granary at mills in this case and uh, the game will only register that as bland food and um, so you have to actually make sure that your mills have a mixture of food stuffs otherwise they're just going to not evolve beyond um, the requirements we did an ancestral shrine let's have a look at our villages and uh, Nua is your god and uh, there's different types of gods you get uh, ancestral at the start then you get Taoism uh, the Tao and Confucianism um, later on, I think it's about Ying or something in the third campaign, and then you get Buddhism in the last part. Um, let's see, let's just draw this road a little bit differently, like so. And um, so we're going to try and get good feng shui in this mission, it's not really necessary, but let's go for it. 
Uh, I've got some pheasants over here. Um, in this first couple of missions, you'll just be playing the same map over and over and expanding upon it. So don't worry about placement and things like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is be saving throughout. I'll um, save like... I know that this mission is called Bampo, so I'm going to do Bampo 1. And instead of doing what I did in Pharaoh, where I would save Bampo 1, Bampo 2 and all that kind of stuff, I'll just save it as one file type over and over. Because uh, the game very rarely crashes. Uh, I don't think we can get them better desirability, so it's not too good. The overall goal is just simply to get the housing up to the requirements. You can keep checking your goals throughout. Um, now there are, as I was saying, there's different goals. Um, some of them are like four trading partners, a certain amount of profit. You might even need a certain um, amount of cash in your treasury. There are loads of goals um, that you can get a hold of. And the types of goals that you get generally tends to affect um, how large your city will be. And it looks like we've got some houses not evolving properly. It looks like there'll have to be some ancestral shrines to boost desirability. Like so. Normally you wouldn't do this in most missions, um, but ancestral shrines are your only way of boosting pot, um, desirability at the moment. Especially as you can't see the desirability. So basically I've just got to get all these houses up to play cottage and then get the count up. It's a simple mission. It really isn't that difficult. And one thing that Emperor does is that at one level you might have to give like three or four different goods. So just be aware that you're probably not going to have... Um, you might have to give like multiple goods at once, so just be aware of that. There are stones of unrest, but you can't do anything about it. In very hard difficulty, um, you just have to deal with the constant there are lots of unrest warnings, uh, because you don't have watchtowers just yet. Um, so let's see. As you can see, there's market led to give it as a common market square some food. Peddler go out and give it um, the food on. Uh, so as you can see, the food information is important. Um, the current quality determines how far up the houses will go. Um, so it's bland food, plain food, appetizing food, tasty food, and delicious food. Bland food is one food stuff. Then it's two, three, four, and then I think you have to add something at the end to get the delicious food. Um, there's a lot of quirks to the food system, so once you've got two foodstuffs minimum in a mill that's constant, just set the, the common market square to only accept black, uh, plain food and then they won't. But you have to be careful with that, because if you do that and there's only one foodstuff in the mill, then they won't go and get it because their foodstuff is set to plain, which means they have to have two foodstuffs minimum in the, the mill. So just be aware that you have to strike that balance. So as you can see we've got 42 in our houses because we've got these evolved. Now it's just a case of evolving all this housing to get the the requirements. 112, we'll just beat this very shortly. So I won't go into too much of the details at this point because the mission's not that long. Um, in the next mission we'll kind of go into the details about it. Um, trade and all that changes substantially. It took me a while to understand the trading system, but now I kind of understand it better. 132 of these people will move in and that'll be that. So that's the first mission. Just build some houses and give them some food and such, so it's not too difficult. You guys coming round. Some people might build their market square squares into the housing block. I don't do that because that's not that's not good. It's badly out. I tend to try and keep the blocks basic like this. If 200 people qualify, we will win the mission when it changes over to the next month, which is good. Uh, don't worry about money. The amount of money you've got is just enough to complete the mission. Well done. You have successfully built a small village and fed them well on meat provided by the hunters. It is easy to see that you learn quickly. Press the proceed button to continue on to the next mission where your people will learn how to coax seedlings from the fertile land. Of course, but we are not going to do that in this video. In the next video we're going to go on to Bampo number 2 where we're just going to come back to the city and grow out the, 
the farming stuff. Uh, you do get scores. Uh, so you can see here you've got a treasury of 19. Uh, the type of the, the amount of money you've got, um, you get a score for that. And there's a whole bunch of other things, so don't worry too much about it. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.